Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to Shutters and Speed. Well, it has to be said, we're going to be looking at something a bit different today in the old Meet the Classic Bike series. So, without further ado, as we say here in Norfolk, as we are just, just about in, in Norfolk, Norfolk. <laughs> we'll run them their titles, boy, and we'll tell you about this fabulous machine we have in front of us today. Yeah, so welcome back to Shirts and Speed. Yeah, today we're back with our good friend Mick here. Now, regular viewers will probably remember that we did a video on one of his fabulous uh, triumphs recently, and uh, that worked out very well. And if you want to have a look at that video, a link will appear up here somewhere uh, for you to have a look at. If you want, wish to go and have a look, that'll be great. Um, but, um, you know, Mick has got uh, one or two other machines that uh, are of great interest to everybody, I think. And it's a very mixed sort of area that uh, we're in with the old motorcycle industry and this is uh, you know sort of going from the sublime to the whatever in terms of uh, you know what's the word um interesting different. yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but none the more for that we do know that these these types of vehicle have a very iconic status with a lot of people and they're extremely interested in them and also the history behind them and and, and it's not to be disregarded that the value of these is, is really quite high right now and you know it they are they are of as much interest to motorcyclists in general as a as a, any other motorcycle i feel um so mick you are the owner of this fabulous machine, so first of all, what is it? I, I'm told, and I'm going to put a caveat in here because I've only had it for six months and I'm not a scooter guy. So I'm told it's a, a sort of a Lambretta, yes. it's got the badge, yes. it's an LI125, uh -huh. uh, but it's fitted with a 200cc engine. Um, I don't know what happened to the 125 engine, but when the previous owner rebuilt it, he purchased a, a 200cc engine, came on a crate, uh, I'm told it's likely uh, to be manufactured by Lambretta in India or, or the, the, the company in India, um, but nonetheless it's got a 200cc engine in, so it's got you know reasonable out of poke. Uh -huh. So, um, how, and how did you acquire this this beast? The short story is, <laughs> you heard the stories about the you know going to see a man about a dog. Yes. Well, we went to see a woman about a dog, uh -huh. and uh, it turned out that she was storing um, a couple of. Uh, motorbikes as she called them uh, in her st a massive uh, warehouse I would say uh, for somebody else a friend of hers called Colin. Um, Colin had rebuilt both of these scooters as they turned out to be this uh, this is 64 Lambretta and a 65 Vespa and um, he would stored them for about three years in this shed. Uh, didn't really know what to do with them, didn't want to ride them anymore because um, of his age and, and uh, uh, but wasn't really sure what to do so I made him an offer because I thought it was a bit different, you know, never owned one, never worked on one uh, and it seemed a shame to have them stuck in the, the shed. This one he, he wheeled out first and um, having stood it, say, in the shed for, for three years, started a started third kick. Wow. And, yeah. uh, and the only thing I've had to do to it really is replace an air hose the, from, from the air filter to the carburettor uh, and um, unstick the rear brake. But other than that, it's really needed nothing doing to it apart from a good clean. OK, so it, it came to you as we see it here. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, there, there are varying sort of uh, approaches to these, if you like. I mean, we, we spoke very briefly about the Quadrophenia era, yeah. where, where they had lots of, you know, bars and, and loads of mirrors. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's also the, the approach that people like the minimalist look. Yeah, and, the and standard look. It's just like the motorbike scene. You, you've got your customizers who, who like to take something and make it of their own, be it an extreme thing like a chopper or a real cut down minimalist cafe racer, or have it, bog standard or near to standard and, and this one's leaning a bit towards the um, the mod stroke quadrophenia thing although you know you say that because it's got these these tall mirrors which are reasonably useful um, but you know these these racks are actually you know, quite yeah. useful you yeah, know yeah. If yeah, you put it to its, its intended oh, right, use yeah. as a commuter bike yes absolutely. you know they'd, they'd be yeah. very useful 
Um, because we also mentioned that um, when they first came out, they were designed for people to be able to use with their best gear on, as it yeah, were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got your, your um, suave, well dressed Italian yes. gentleman. And his sharp or, or, suit. You know, and, you know, commuting to work, he doesn't want to be mucking up the tops of his shoes with a gear lever. Uh, and um, you want some protection from the elements. So you've got your, your hand change and you've got your, your foot brake down there. You can jump on it in your suit, ride to work, get off it. And you are as well dressed as you were when you set off. Very unlike in the, back in the 80s when I used to commute to work in my motorbike gear and arrive at work all creased up and looking like a, an absolute scruff and yeah. maybe soaking wet. Yeah, and also probably coated in oil as well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a Honda then, so probably not. But yeah, you know, I, know, I know you mean, yeah. And, and of course, um, also, ladies were using them. I mean, I know there's, been, there's yeah. been sort of, um, you know, nostalgic programmes on the television but, which shows you ladies wearing skirts riding these, mm. to, you know, around and about, which, yeah, you know, obviously with the protection you have, is, is quite useful, isn't it? They're an incredibly practical thing and, and what impressed me when I started... Um, you know, just cleaning it up and, and uh, working on, on this and the Vespa was, was just, you, uh, people might argue at this point, but how well engineered they are in the sense of how it's compact. Right. You know, the engine transmission, everything is under there. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, if you go have a look at it, it's actually a real compact lump. And um, it, it's, it's re really well designed. And... Uh, the ride on those little wheels is rather interesting. Uh, it, it tends to t tell you where it wants to go. Uh -huh. uh, but if you kind of just, you know, hold on and um, let it go, you know, it, it's good fun. Well, I'm sure we'll find out about that in, the, in, the, in, a, in a few moments. But, you know, well, thank you for that, Mitt, because, you know, it, it is a good introduction into what these are about really i think mm. um and you know they are they are part of a you know the, the the people who ride these are very very enthusiastic about them Massive, and you yeah. know and i can yeah. I, and i can see where why really they they really and they can look look really good i think mm. so you know so as ever we've had the insight into the uh, into the, this one and its background now we've got to find out how she rides and the superb two stroke sound she makes on start up Well, we're away, and here we are out on the Lambretta, and uh, <laughs> it certainly is an experience, let me tell you. We're rattling along about 35 miles an hour, and uh, everything is hunky-dory, it has to be said. Yeah, she's, um, she's certainly a bit squirrely, and uh, very interesting, but you know, that's part of the charm. And uh, you know we are we are having a nice ride out. Mick did say you know be careful small wheels you know, and this is something that I'm uh, <laughs> not entirely used to. It has to be said, but none the more for that we're uh, we're getting along. We're getting along and we're getting along quite nicely. We're going along on a fairly bumpy uh, Fen Road in the middle of nowhere. Um, but you know, it's uh, it's all going quite nicely. Regular reader, uh, viewers will know that uh, or note that <laughs> we're wearing a new crash helmet. Um, yes, and that is true. We've we've just invested in a new helmet, um, but there'll be more on that in a future video. But for now, I'm just concentrating on keeping this thing on the straight and narrow. The one thing, one piece of advice Mick gave me when we went came for a ride on this was to. Um, just let it do its thing. There he goes, he's off. <laughs> We're really out in the teeth of a fen wind now. Um, and you know, things are <laughs> quite different. But you know, it's, uh, I tell you what, it, it's not too bad. It's not a bad ride. The uh, seating position is nice and comfortable. Um, and everything seems to be okay at the moment. The gear change has taken a little bit of getting used to, um, but you know, I think we'll get there in the end and uh, everything will be uh, good to go. It was quite interesting actually, because um, when Mick gave me a call and said, do you fancy a ride on something a bit different then, Steve? And I said, oh, that'd be nice. What have you got in mind? 
and he said I've got some two strokes for you to have a look at and I thought wow two strokes that would be good he, he said I know you've got a penchant for two strokes and I said I said yes I certainly have and uh, I was thinking maybe a Yamaha RD or a uh, Kawasaki triple of some sort um, but uh, when, I, when I was faced with the prospect of having a ride on one of these um, that was a bit of a shock to the system it has to be said but you know it's been it's been pretty good I've uh, quite enjoyed it um, and uh, you know the ride has been very interesting none the more for that it's uh, it's a different experience but it's still a pleasant one we've probably gone from first to third there yeah I'm not quite I haven't quite mastered the gear change yet I don't think but we, we're finding the gear somewhere huh. I think I went from first to third there Ooh, we're now going out onto some main road action. That'll be interesting. Brakes are quite effective. Oh, yes, that's better. That was a better gear change, Stephen. We're away. I think we're in third now. I think we'll probably leave it there. Whoa! Uh, and we're cruising. Fantastic. So let's take this opportunity to have a good look at this fabulous looking machine. like we're hanging the left up here oh we're on the we have been on the big four seven interestingly enough I've uh, back in the day we'll just negotiate this roundabout uh, get that uh, out of the way before we start talking too much concentrate on the riding yeah um, riding along the a47 there I can remember back in the day uh, back in the sort of late 70s when I first got into motorcycling you'd often see gangs of these or hordes or swarms whichever word you like to use <laughs> that they would be they would be hammering down the A47 towards Great Yarmouth on a bank holiday weekend for one of their one of their gatherings and uh, you know it's quite interesting seeing all, all these scooters in all their different guises and so forth uh, which was really uh, quite interesting because um, some of them you know, had lots of mirrors and, you know, and bits and bobs on um, and some had uh, some had the um, more stripped down look you know, where they had, it, had no leg guards or anything um, so you know that was quite useful too yeah so um, you know, that was always very interesting and also uh, when I was even younger there was, there was a gang of boys in the village where I grew up they had these as well and uh, I used to sit and admire them as they came by. Um, so this is all, you know, as ever, bringing back a lot of happy memories from my childhood and, uh, you know, teens. And when I got into motorised transport, I used, to, uh, I used to enjoy watching these things go about. And actually, here we are now. We're sort of just bumbling through a, uh, a Fen village here. And uh, it's all very civilised. You know, very easy to to manoeuvre, and indeed, once you get the hang of it, you know it really isn't too bad at all. I think Mick is trying to. Uh, <laughs> he realises that I'm uh, obviously a newbie to this, um, but he's he's very keen for me to experience the performance. So uh, when we stop back there for a brief moment, he just said to me, "You know, open her up, open her up." And that is that is something actually that is quite funny really with when you talk about um, people who allow me to ride these things i'm i'm being very careful about how i uh, treat these uh, classic vehicles and um, let's get the right gear there we go yeah um but the, the, the people who allow me to have a go on them they're very keen for me to really give it something 
find out what they're like, which I find quite, well, I, I'd like to think that they, they sort of trust me, I guess. But, you know, I, I'm very sceptical about, um, you know, get, taking somebody's, thrashing somebody's pride and joy down a bumpy Fen Road. But we'll see how we get on. Oh, we're back at HQ. That's good. Well, that's been a very enjoyable ride, Mick. So thank you so much for allowing me to have a go on this. Another one of your iconic collection of motorcycles. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, Mick, as ever, what a pleasure that was. It's certainly something different, it has to be said, but enjoyable as well. Mm. You know, it's quite quite nice running this thing up and down the country lanes. You can relax, can't you? Can you? Sorry? You can relax. Yes, just... yeah, you just cruise along, yeah. you know, there's, without care in the world, and just go nice and steady, and, and it's a very enjoyable mm. ride. And I can actually see why these things are so popular, you mm. know, and, you know, I can understand why people love them so much. Mm. And so it's it's been a... Uh, insight into a world that I've never experienced before. So I'd like to thank you very much for allowing me to have a ride on this fact. Sure, that's a pleasure. So I think that's uh, probably as far as we want to go today, people. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, and if you have, then obviously I'd hope that you would like and subscribe. And uh, that will keep you up to, take, up to date with what we're up to on the channel with uh, videos and so forth. So. It's a, a big thank you to Mick for allowing us to have a, a go on, on another one of his fabulous machines. And uh, that's about it for today. So without further ado, it's goodbye from Mick. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.